Hello and welcome back to Teach Me Something. Now today I am joined by the very lovely Miss Anna Patch. How are you, Anna? Hi, Lewis. I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. So, Anna, in its simplest form, what do you do for a living? I am an actress and a filmmaker and all-round creative. So how did you first get into that? Because that's just so interesting. How does one get into, like, acting? Is it just through drama at school and then you progress into auditions or...? Tell me a bit more. Yeah, so I, I think everyone's journey is different. And for me personally, I've always wanted to be an actor. Since I can remember, I just said to my mom, I was like, I want to act. And it kind of just never went away. And I did drama in like primary school and then high school came around and I just had no call to do it in high school. And dad was always like, you want to be an actor? Why are you not doing drama? I was like, no, it's high school. I'm not doing drama. Um, and then finished school. And then once I graduated year 12, I then was, it was still there. I still had this big calling to do it. And then I just started doing training, like classes, weekly classes, getting my skills up, um, And yeah, started doing student films, short films, music videos, local independent work, stuff like that. And, you know, I did some extras work to start off with too. And that was really cool to see like the big scale, like US productions, like Aquaman and Thor, which is really cool for like a, a newish actor on the block to be like, wow, this is like how much work goes into it. One film, like, and there's so many films being filmed all at the same time. Um, And, yeah, so I just started, I consist consistently did those classes and training and over time developed my skills as an actress and to learn about the industry and the business side of it. And I'm still here 10 to 12 years later. Um, yeah, that's how I started personally. Cool. Mm. And um, let's let's go into filmmaking because I know that you have an interest and you have done it um, with your student films and you've also made some proper cinematography. Um, and what I mean by proper is you've had premieres and you've taken it super seriously, got a cast and all the rest of it. So tell me a bit more about the the process that goes into Like firstly starting with a film, uh, like from its plot, like getting a script um, conceptualized and then bring me into like some sort of cinematography where you go from like locations and like sh actual end up shooting. That's a big question and I want to cover it, but you can break it down. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's really cool to be able to do filmmaking now because I have been acting for so long, so to then expand my range to write and produce and direct as well. I think it's really beautiful for actors if they are called to do it because it just takes the pressure off just acting. Um, just wanted to, like, side note that. Um, but filmmaking, so starting off, it starts with an idea. And then it's the second step is taking that idea and being like, I'm going to write something. And one of my past mentors, Izzy Stevens, she helped me write my first film, El Sol, or helped like guide me because I was in a mentorship learning about it. And it was the idea um, that kind of dropped into my mind when I was with my best, one of my best friends on the beach in Byron Bay. And that's what ended up being the film about us. under a full moon camping. So I, what she told us, she suggests to do is like a, tr a trash draft and you just get, you get a draft on a page. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's no perfectionism, like get your ideas and the writing and the dialogue between the two characters or how many characters you have and kind of just get it on a page. And then from there you can ask, you can go back and um, edit it and ask for support and ask people that you trust to look over it and give you feedback. Um, and then once that happens, my first film and my second film maybe took about three to four edits, sometimes like little minor changes. And sometimes like the first film, El Sol, there was more kind of dialogue changes. For example, you know, writing a script, you don't write, I walked to the shop. Oh, sorry. Sarah walked to the shop. It's like Sarah is walking to the shop because it, in the movie it's happening in the present time. So little things like that, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Um, because when you're watching it, it's present, it's happening in the moment for that character. So it's like Sarah walked to the shop. It's like, no, 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 she's walking. So Mm -hmm. learning all of that. And then once it's edited, it then goes, what happens after that? So once you've got a script, it can then go to reaching out to people, crew, to work on it with you. Usually I'll go to either co-producer 
or a first assistant director to help me. So co-producer does, um, so producing is like all the logistics and the funding, the money, the organisation, getting the, the dietary requirements, the numbers, the emails, all the info of all the cast and the crew and putting it all together. And then um, a co if you have a co-producer working with you, they just help you with all the organisation. And then first assistant director is someone on set that kind of runs the set on the day. Um, so shout out to Rhiannon Watson um, for my, she's one of my good friends and she is an amazing first AD. And it's just like having a first, a really good first AD is amazing because like for me, when you're doing your own independent work um, and if you're acting in it too, it's like you've got, you've done producing, you've written it and you're acting on the day. So um, to have that help is really important, I think. And it just helps the set and the filming go smoothly. And she's it like the first AD kind of just yet yeah, runs the set kind of thing. And, you know, we obviously all collaborate on the day, pardon me, which is what I love. And the first AD does like, um, what do they do? They do the call to the, the, um, the call sheet, which is, you know, you get your call time of 8am. So you've got to be at set on 8am and you confirm that you've got it. And it has everyone's call times, lunch break time, um, the scenes when you're filming them, that's all kind of first AD stuff. And then I, what I would do as a producer, I would then, once I've kind of got my first AD slash potential co-producer locked in, I would then start reaching out to other crew, like cinematographer, DOP to film it, someone to do sound, someone to do lighting. Um, and on smaller productions, like independent films, like short films, you can potentially get one person to do two jobs if they're comfortable doing both. Um, you get a runner, which is like an assistant to help you on the day. And it's just finding crew and people that you like and maybe having meetings. And then there's after you get that, you have meetings with the cinematographer and um, the cast and chat about it and how they, they do a shot list. So they, they, they read the script and then put it into how they want to shoot it, collaborate again, chat. And then it's all that kind of stuff happening and producing. I'm getting people's dietary requirements and like organizing food for the day. And then there's location scouting in the middle of this as as well so for my films personally I went with Rhiannon and we scouted a couple of locations what felt good like we kind of went rogue a little bit and we're like okay hey, cool how can we film here and just taking photos sending that to the DOP having a group chat um and then that's all the pre-production so that's called pre-production so pre-production filming and then once all that's kind of organized I send them contracts agreements just so everyone's like knows what their credits are agrees to the same thing if it's paid if it's not paid everyone just agreeing to that it's all in writing that's really important and then the cast release form um, that they give permission to be on screen and be like the images being used um, and then once we have all that we go into filming how many days my first one was two days second film was one day and then everyone's there, all the pre-production is done and we collaborate and film it like, and we do our scenes as per the shot list, have lunch and that is filming done. And then it goes into post-production, which is editing, getting music, collaborating with the editor, um, getting feedback, sending it to maybe your co-producer or the director to get like feedback and thoughts on editing. And, and then once it's edited, voila, you have a film and you can submit it to film festivals or have a screening. Um, there's a lot, but um, there's that's so like a, a very quick kind of overview. Um, but once you like break it down step by step, it's quite, I think it's just like you just got to do your first one. When I did El Sol, I was so out of my depth, but I had support yeah. and then I took everything that I learned from my first one and the second one was so much easier. Uh -huh. um, I know what to do and look for, but I think it's, doing your first one. If anyone's watching this and you want to do your first one, find a cool team, take it slow, ask for mm -hmm. help and you'll learn. Um, how would, yeah. if, if someone wanted to start, how would you find the right people per se? Yeah. So it's, I think being in the industry potentially in some way already helps because you may have worked with someone previously that you know that's you know into lighting or they want to do more cinematography and asking you know how they'd feel about working with you sending them a message on instagram or even emailing um or asking people in the industry if they have any referrals it's a lot about like who you know and um also get i like asking for um referrals 
uh, because if someone's worked with them before and I trust this person or I know this person, you know, in some way, I'd be like, okay, cool. They liked working with them. It's like getting that good feedback. So pretty much just asking around with, even if you're just starting, maybe asking people that you know in the industry, if they know anyone or they've worked with anyone that they would recommend. Yeah. Cool. Um, I just want to circle back to before you started um, answering that question. And you said it takes the pressure off of actually acting when you're behind the camera. So tell me more about that. Yeah, cool. I love that question. Um, so when I was younger, I thought acting was the only thing that I could do. And I had to just solely focus on that. And then once I got older and I worked on myself more like inner work and just started seeing what else was out there, the opportunity to create stories and not wait for anyone to put me in anything. That was one of the main reasons that I started it because I wanted to tell stories and I didn't want to just sit at home and wait when I had all these, I have all these ideas in my mind that I wanted to produce and make. And then once I started doing that, I was like, oh, wow, this has just opened me up to more opportunities because, you know, one, I got to tell a really beautiful story about my life. And then the second one was, you know, a more not based on real life stuff. Um, uh, and I think it just opened me up to more opportunities because it put me, it put me on the radar and it allowed me to collaborate with people and like make a really cool story and, just take the pressure of being in, uh, just solely acting because there's so much more creativity that's out there if we allow ourselves to experience it. And, you know, if, you know, me, I, me personally, I was called to write and produce so I didn't sit around waiting and then I'm like, oh, wow, I can do so much other stuff and acting's still going to be in my life. I don't have to just solely focus on it and be like desperately like acting. I can be like acting and this and this and this. Oh, cool, I got an acting job. Cool, and I'll, tomorrow I'll do that, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah so quite multifaceted so again another thing I wanted to pick up on from what you just said is um your storytelling arc so you said that you've done one from almost lived experience from your own life and one not so which one did you enjoy the more Well, that's a hard one, Lewis. They're both so different. One of them's a best friend camping trip. The other ones, they're all trying to escape a cult. Um, but I loved doing El Sol, the best friend camping trip, because that was a beautiful way to kind of share my experience and, uh, and just kind of reflect on the friendship that I have with Georgie, who plays uh, Libby in that, um, and I think El Sol will always be my baby, like my first debut film and, Um, the team that worked on that was amazing and they know is an amazing team as well. A lot of them came back for, they know the second film. Um, I think El Sol being my baby, um, for now, but they know is really fun. It's like a thriller, like there's blood. So that was really cool just to kind of go totally off and like look into cults and stuff and, um, write that. So it was a nice contrast. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the only cult films I've seen is uh, Florence Pugh in, what's that one called again? I can't with that. Um, what is it called? Um, oh, Midsummer. Midsummer. that's it. That was, if you haven't seen it, anybody out there, go and watch it because it's crazy. It's actually, it's so hectic. Um, I can't. if... That was actually like inspo for that. Yeah, I like I the bet kind it was. Of, yeah, yeah. Um, if you could go back and start your acting career all over again, what are the first three things that you'd do? Work on my mindset. Okay. In Like terms make of that a uh, go deeper into that for me. Yeah. Um, not placing my val like finding the value from within me first and um not placing my worth or value or how successful I was um based on what jobs I was booking, what agent I was with, or how good of an actor I was like telling myself I was or wasn't. Um and just having like a strong foundation of, oh, I I'm I've got this, I can do this, doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Um having like just a solid kind of belief in myself. I've always believed in myself, but just having the mindset of like, okay, cool. Like that, that wasn't meant to be. That also comes with the, um, the time of being an actor, but I think it would just be backing myself a little bit more and just working on um, just those limiting beliefs.
of um that they were pretty solid to start off with to be honest but there was still like I've done so much work over the last seven years for that because it's so they're so deep you know so um, just allowing more space to um more space to be more creative and just take the pressure off just being an actor like let's like be open to um if you love dancing go have a dance class like you know you don't do acting all the time kind of Mm -hmm. thing so it's always going to be there like trusting that yeah cool yeah all right thank you so much for having for coming on um where can people find you if they want to learn more or ask you any questions yeah so you can find me on instagram at anapatch underscore and my um, my production page is patch productions underscore as well and then i have my links in my anapatch instagram where you can find me there Amazing. Thank you so much for having us. I think your insight is uh, inspirational to people who want to get into acting and filmmaking. So yeah, if you want to reach out to Anna, please. Thanks, Lewis. That was great. Thank you.